Alright, we have a bunch of souls here, so it may be a smart idea to, to level up a little bit. Uh, a little extra strength never hurt nobody, right? It's more endurance. Yeah, this is fine. Uh, and let's kindle this while we're at it. So yeah, you can kind of see that this was meant to be... There, there was meant to be a path here to, you know, like, from where we were previously. But that this big rocks, like, like this... There was clearly a cave-in at some point that... Cut off the path entirely and made our lives just a little bit harder. Anyway, one thing that I guess shows that we're... that we maybe haven't... like, that you maybe should come here a little bit earlier is that normally an NPC would appear here. I believe the reason that he has disappeared is that we did most of the Petrus of Thorolin uh, quest while we were... while we were off doing stuff. Er... We did most of the Petrus of Thorolin quest before we ever came here. So... This NPC has moved on to his second place. Also, sort of a sort of a silly side note, you can even slide down these ladders that are just rungs like straight into rock. Sort of a funny little thing. Um, so I guess we're gonna miss the event that normally happens here, but uh, normally, if you talk to the NPC up here, he's kind of a shifty character, and hilariously. Oh, that explosion actually was probably just a head exploding. I thought it might trigger the thing, but the character will actually pull the lever and spin this bridge down so that it will, if you were on it, it'll just knock you straight off of it. He's kind of a dick. Let's see what we can see around here. Although, honestly, I might have a different path I want to take. Oh, hello. Granted, we do want to make sure we kill all of the necromancers in this area. So it may be a good idea to just go through for that. By the way, be careful of the skeletons when they have that special pose. What? He parried me through the world! I just got mega owned. <laughs> I've never seen that happen. Oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> Maybe we should go get our souls. Nice. Uh, so, be careful of the skeletons when they have that pose. They will parry you, which will knock you over, and it's not a fun time. Um, it will also apparently knock you entirely through the world if you're standing on stairs in just the wrong way. Skeletons. Wow. These two are a bit weird to handle. Boop. Boy, I send these guys flying when I hit them like that. Bam! I do like that you can hit skeletons when they're down. Here's a... Uh... Oh, interesting. This is actually a game-created message. Like, this is actually a player-created... Or, not a player-created message. A dev message. Uh, I don't want to go down this path. Sure. This pit is a bit of a trap. So yeah, this is a dev message because it's actually leads you into a pit surrounded by archers and filled with skeletons. This is uh, quite a difficult combat challenge. Damn, I didn't even kill that guy. We should probably get out of the way. 
Uh, these skeletons are also under a necromancer, of course. So if you don't have a divine weapon, this room is terrifying. Ooh, and so is that. Boy, I kind of wish I had my bigger shield now. Whoop. We can at least make these guys stagger with our large, uh, with our mallet. We gotta hit him twice, but it does the job. There we go. And then, for taking this little uh, trip, we find the Dark Moon Seance Ring. What an interesting ring to have down here. Let's see. Grants additional attunement slots. This ring is granted to adherents of Gwendolyn, Dark Moon Deity, and last born of Gwyn, Lord of Sunlight. Grants additional magic attunement slots. The Dark Sun Gwendolyn is the only remaining deity in Honor Londo. His followers are few, but their tasks are of vital importance. So this ring tells us about another uh, deity of New Londo ruins, and it sort of has an interesting statement that uh, Gwendolyn is the last of the gods in New Lon in, uh, Honor Londo. We'll see why that's an interesting statement quite a ways from now. But for now, suffice it to say that it's kind of interesting that there, that this, uh, that we've, we've now been able to tie this cemetery to Gwyn and his followers. You can tell that there must have been some sort of importance to this cemetery, uh, to the gods, and that does sort of also hint at the, gi uh, you know, like, uh, the, the giants that we've also been seeing here. We do finally find the Necromancer all this way over here. Um, this is this is actually God. I fucking love that thing, that hit sends them flying. So we've pretty much made a big circle here, uh, back to the area where the skeleton archers were. Let's take this guy out. Get out of here. So now. You look over here, and I believe this is where... Oh, actually, this is the area uh, where the switch was beforehand, I believe. Oh, why thank you. You're very helpful, game-created messages. Well, let's see what's up. Hmm... Another creepy dark area. More of these fucking trap things. And a miracle. Tranquil Walk of Peace. This is the miracle cast by the Stone Giants, which also sort of gives us another interesting connection uh, to another place. This, this catacomb seems to have been fairly heavily used. Outland Miracle. Foreign to the Way of the White. Slows all walking with an effect area. This miracle is normally used to flee, as it slows walking but does not affect attacks, but nevertheless defines peace perfectly. This is another one of those really subtle, really nice things, because the, the first thing it tells you is that it's foreign to the Way of the White. The Way of the White is the sort of priest order that Petrus is in, it has that, uh, you know, it's, it's noble, it's priestly, but then it immediately says that this is not a miracle of that school, and it talks about how it defines peace perfectly. It's really sort of a, another jab at the, at the religious purity claimed to be had by the Way of the White and by uh, Thoroland and all of their priests. You know, Petrus is fucking evil. Tranquil Walk of Peace is a miracle that is very peaceful, which sort of implies by way of, you know, like just snidely implies that the Way of the White is not peaceful. I, I really like it. Um, so now let's see about these platform things. Yes, you will actually fall down 
into a fucking skeletons. Oh, right. We are like all the way back up the catacombs here. Wow. I didn't actually realize this went all the way back up here. It's kind of convenient. I mean, fighting three skeletons isn't, but you know. Oh, shit. <laughs> Be careful around skeletons. Trust, uh, trust no skeleton. Oop, there we go. Yeah, three, like, fighting more than one skeleton is difficult. Fighting three sucks. You really have to kind of resign yourself to taking some hits. And of course, if they just happen to go into parry stance at, at the wrong time, it's, uh, it's really bad for you. Oh, come on. That's horse shit. We were far enough away to avoid the parry. But yeah, it's, it's like... Sometimes they will just do the parry stance while you're in your wind-up, and it's like, fuck off. That one also just showed us a super tornado attack. But, we handled it. Let's just make short work of these. Come back at the area that I want to actually show off. Let's see if there are some other paths we might be able to take. Anything interesting in these side areas around here. Again, a lot of this is me sort of like trying to remember what all the paths are, so... It is good to have a weapon that makes these guys just die. You can, or it makes these guys st uh, slow down because it, it gives you a moment to not be attacked by five of them at once. Another room that I kind of avoided here because it was filled with skeletons and we had no healing left. Boy, if I had just one more hit on this, it would be nice. There we go. No, Mr. Parry over here. You know, you gonna attack me? Come on, I'm open. I'm right here. Bam! Get out of here. Get a soul of a proud knight for our troubles, and our troubles are many. And then. I believe there is one more path up here I want to go. Continue to be chased eternally by skeletons. Whoop! Fall down here. I wonder if any skeletons follow us. These holes are pretty small, so it's actually kind of tough for the skeletons to properly fall into them. Kind of random fun fact. You also sort of just start to assume you're going to get poked by these things and serpentine around them. Another long ladder. Let's see what we find. Waterfall's getting quite loud. That's because we actually end up right over here. Wow, I thought there was actually a point to that. My bad. Alright, so, you may have noticed when we came up to this little hole here, there actually was another alternate path that we could take. This leads us to the Great Scythe. Um, and I believe this place right out here is just, yeah, the switch that we use to open one of the doors. Uh, uh, Great size say anything interesting? I, I literally don't know. Weapon with a long curved blade, converted from a wheat harvesting tool. The magnificent sharp curved blade instills fear in opponents. Perhaps it is, it is their survival instinct at work. Cute little text there. Another hole to fall in. We're suddenly in quite a different area. 
And we've actually skirted around one of the more annoying encounters in this whole area, so I'm, I'm not going to look that gift horse in the mouth. We are getting quite deep, though. I wonder what sorts of things await us. We are getting into more fancier coffins here, really. Looks like there's a break over there, but let's let's see what's over this way. There's an item over here. No. Nope. Let's uh let's see what's going on in this neck of the woods. Oh. Oh, hello there. Uh double hello there. This is one of those things that like you hear about on the internet because you know, like the whole curl up into a ball. Why would you ever nestle in a coffin? You know, would, will, will you rarely, like, just find this on your own? Maybe, maybe not. That's kind of the magic. It, it worked well last time, right? Let's, let's just hop right in there. We could leave. This is a little bit awkward, but I, it's comfy in here, right? There's, there's a Titanite demon, but they don't seem to be bothering us. Yeah, this is fine. I could get used to this. Nice and comfy. It's worth noting the wait for a cutscene here is about 30 seconds, if I remember correctly. Like, just enough time to make you feel like a total idiot. There is a half second still of a skeleton right above your head closing the gate closing the coffin. Oh god, it's so freaky. Like you you barely see it, but it's there. And it seems we've uh We've entered the Tomb of the Giants. In fact, we've entered a boss arena, but not not for the reason of, you know, fighting a boss. No. We find Nito, first of the undead, offering to enter a covenant with us. This is kind of an evil covenant, so I'm not really a fan of it. Though actually, I believe to get the... One weird thing about the Steam achievements in this game, and actually the regular Xbox achievements, is if you hit Enter Covenant and then just leave, you don't join the Covenant, but you do unlock the achievement for finding the Covenant. So, uh, this is neat. We're... We're gonna leave now. This is, this is like... This is one of the great lords that you just, you just find by nestling in a coffin. You're just just sitting down and you get taken over to him if you want to go worship him that's that's really creepy I want to go back in my coffin <laughs> you jump in there so fast like nope 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 don't want it don't like it I don't want to be here the first person shot here is also beautiful like it, you you look around and and I, like the the feel of a coffin closing around you is just so fucking visceral. So hey, I guess that's two covenants we found today. Neat. Let's just pretend that never happened. <laughs> <laughs> 